Tim Grover has a great quote. He says, good is the enemy of great. Why is good the enemy of great? Because people will never strive for great because they're doing good enough. But some people really don't know what it takes. And that's why they never go from good to great because they really don't know that it takes that much effort, that much setbacks to achieve success. You wanna limit your association with people who are not where you would like to be. You want to decide, make a decision that this is your new identity, that you're a five cooler person, despite those people around you being either one cooler people or no cooler people. Don't expect people to understand your, your, your dream if they don't have your vision. If you want to win in life, you have to understand that you're going to be the odd ball. You will be different. What's up guys and welcome to the DNG podcast. I've got a great story for you here today. I got a great episode for you. Today's episode, I'm gonna be talking about a story that I heard the Wolf of Wall Street uh, in an interview, right? Uh, his name is Jordan Belfort and he was talking about this story back in 1978. And this story goes to show the differences between somebody who has grit, somebody who has hustle, somebody who has credibility and granted, the guy got in trouble for what he did, but at the end of the day, you can't deny that the guy was a smart dude. Uh, he had the hustle. Now, he did it in a legal way. Whatever, man. Everybody has a past. Now he's doing things in a, in a good way. So this is a story that I feel that we could all learn from. So here's the way the story goes. It was 1978, and this guy went to Jones Beach in New York. It's a huge beach, and he starts to notice that a bunch, it's a very hot day, People are having a good time in the beach. And then he starts noticing that people are, in his words, here's what he said. People are bitching and moaning that they had to walk half a mile down to the concession stand to buy their ice cream and candies, right? Those were his words. That was, you know, end quote. And he said, so I thought to myself, what if I'm able to have the ice cream, the Italian ices, the you know, Snickers and the fudgesicles and the chipwick or whatever they're, they're called. Chip, which is, I think, is the word he said. Uh, what if I could have them here <clears throat> and these people don't have to, draw, you know, walk half a mile and I can just sell them here? I wonder if that'll work. OK, so here's what happens. He says that the next day, what he did is he looked on the yellow pages and he realized, oh, OK, here is a uh, location that sells ice cream, wholesale ice cream. So he says that he took twenty two dollars. He says, I took $22, $7 was for, for the cooler. $15 was for the ice cream. $22 in total. He says, I went down to the beach. He says, I went down to the beach to the, to, you know, where, where the water is connecting, right? To the edge of the water. And I started yelling, ice cream, Italian ices, fudgesicles, you know, whatever, whatever. All, all the things that he's selling, right? And he started selling them because people were, because he, what happened? He noticed that there was a problem that needed filling. Again, his words, he said people were bitching and moaning that they had to ha walk half a mile down to the concession stand. So what did he do? He solved that problem for them. I don't know about you, but if I've got my son in the beach and I have to walk half a mile to get him some ice cream and there's a dude right here that's selling it for three, four times the price, I'm going to pay three, four times the price because I'm not going to walk half a mile. I would much rather pay a premium for somebody else to walk that mile for me. So that, that is the first lesson. There's a lesson in business. You find a need in the marketplace and you fill that need. Now this was a small need, but check this out. Check out how much money he made. Keep in mind, 1978 in New York, the minimum wage in 1978, he said was a dollar and Okay. So anyways, he says within an hour, I sold out. Within an hour, I sold all the ice creams, all the candies, everything. He says, and I made a hundred, I sold everything. I had $125 at the end. Mind you, he was in $22. He sold everything for, and he still, of course, has the, the container, right? Which is a tool that he gets to use. But the, the bottom line is, he put in 22 bucks. He took out 125. He profited $103 in an hour. It is currently 2022. It's about, what, what, what is that, 40 years, 40 some odd years later. If somebody makes $100 in an hour today, 40 years later, that'd be a pretty good hour, right? This guy made $103 in profit in an hour in 1972. No, excuse me, 1978. So here's an important note to, note, to, to, to think of. 
The average person made $1.20 an hour back in 1978. That means that if they work 40 hours per week, if my math is right, I'm doing this off the top of my head, but if my math is correct, in one hour, he made what most people made in two and a half weeks because he solved the problem and he had that grit. You know, Tony Robbins famously said, one of my favorite quotes by Tony Robbins, he says, your biggest resource is your resourcefulness. You imagine, for example, the other day I was um, in my house, I was outside playing with my son. We're using, he's got like a little Lamborghini that he drives and we're driving and I see some of the neighbors, some of the kids' neighbors, they had a little lemonade stand and they also had some, some saw, uh, excuse me, some um, gum for sale. So we go over and I say, hey, how much is a lemonade? How much are the, you know, these candy? I didn't want lemonade necessarily and I certainly didn't want any gum. But I said, I'm going to support these kids, right? And I bought some of the, the things. Even if back then, let's say, 22 bucks he was in, right? $7 for a cooter, $15 for the ice cream. Let's say he didn't have the money. But if he goes to somebody, a friend of his, the father of a friend, whatever the case may be, and says, hey, listen, I've got an idea. Here's a problem I see at the beach. I feel like if I show up with a cooler and I have all of these things, I feel like I could flip that money. I can make some good profits. Somebody, right, this is called OPM, other people's money, Successful people use OPM, other people's money, OPI, other people's ideas. This is an idea that th this could work today. This could work absolutely today. I go to the beach, hunting a beach very often here in California. I see people walk around selling fruit, selling candy, selling waters and sodas and whatnot. And guess what? They're making money. There is a lot of ways to make money, but most people just don't have the grit. So let's get back to the story. So here's the deal. The story doesn't end there. And this next part of the story is where I could relate to Jordan a lot, right? This is where that grit and that hustle comes in that I could relate to him a lot. So the very next day, here's what he does. He goes back with four coolers instead of one cooler. He says, the next day I go back with four coolers instead of one cooler. Who wouldn't, right? Now, let me stop right there. The answer is hardly anybody would. When you say who wouldn't, right? I understand why he said that. Who wouldn't? would be a very small amount of people if you're talking about people with this type of hustle, with this type of mindset, with a bulletproof mindset, people that are willing to hustle. It is a very, very small select a few people. Most people will not. Most people won't even look for how to solve a problem. Most people will complain about their day, complain about where they're at or where they're not, but not think of finding a solution. They just think of complaining. So anyways, Next day, he goes with four instead of one. So when he goes with the four coolers, he ends up making between four and $500. Now, it didn't take him an hour. Probably took him, let's say it took him four or five hours, right? Let's say an hour per cooler. Fair enough. Four or five hours. Makes four or 500 bucks. There's not a lot of people in 2022 that make four or $500 per day, much less than five hours, right? So he makes four or 500 bucks. Then he says, I got so excited. That changed my life. He says, I invited a couple of my friends, four or five of my friends. So the next time that they go out there, he goes with a couple of his friends and he showed them what he did. He showed them how much money he made and he goes with his friends. So he ends up showing up with five of his friends and shows them how to do it. Has enough stuff to buy. For, now, I don't know if he took a piece of the action or if he just showed them and they put up their money. He doesn't get into that story. But the point is, he says, out of the five friends that I invited, one of the five sold more than one cooler. One of the five sold five coolers. The rest of them sold one cooler and stopped. I guess they made a hundred bucks. They're like, hey man, I made a hundred bucks. Let me go ahead and chill on the beach. And they stopped. He says, now mind you, we were broke. We didn't have any money. To me, I looked at this as an opportunity. Hey man, I found the gold mine. Let's get it while it's good. And it's New York, right? So it's not going to be hot year round in New York, right? It's a short amount of time. But he says, what surprised me was that out of the five friends, only one of them sold all day long, the way that I did. Everybody else sold one and quit. They, they, I guess they went enjoy the beach, enjoy their hundred bucks or whatever the case may be. Now here's the deal. That's not very surprising because most people won't even go and take the action to sell one cooler. The fact that, that he got five friends to actually show up to the beach to work, to sell one cooler, right? The fact that that happened, uh, is actually a little bit impressive. Because even though, and he calls them the one cooler people. He's like, there's a one cooler people and then there, there, there's a five cooler people. Me and my other buddy, we sold five coolers, right? The rest of the guys, they sold one and they quit. He calls them the one cooler people and the five cooler people. Now, here's the deal. The majority of the world are not even the one cooler people. Now, the one cooler people reminds me of those people that are temporarily motivated. 
right? I run multiple businesses. My main business is my solar business. And I run into people all of the time that are temporarily motivated. They get started and they do something a little bit. They get a little bit tired. They get a little bit of rejection and then they quit very easily. This is how the majority of the people are wired. This is just absolutely how the majority of the people are wired. So then he asked himself the question, why is it? I started asking myself that question. Why is it that some people are one cooler people, some people are five cooler people? And he says, and I, I figured it out. I figured out why. He says, it's their standards. He says, it's their standards. They have a champagne vision with a beer, with beer standards. Champagne vision with beer standards. I like the way that he put that. And I, I started talking about, thinking about it, and I said, yeah, that's true. Most people's standards are very, very low. I'll give an example. I was talking to a family member the other day who works with me, and uh, this person was telling me about a friend that they mentioned to that works with us and says, how come you don't attend the training? You c complain about not having enough money to pay the bills. You complain about this and you realize, you see how many people are making a lot of money working with JC. How come you don't attend the trainings? So this person says, it's because they're via Zoom. I'm more of an in-person type of person. And I, I can't help but to like tell this person, don't waste your time. Because first of all, we do have trainings in person. And that's the same type of person that will make the same, the, 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 they'll always make an excuse. They'll say that they can train, uh, attend the trainings in person because of other factors. It's more inconvenient. They have to drive. Nowadays, people are used to doing it via Zoom. So even if you have them, the people, th those types of people, when Zoom didn't exist, they complain about the distance. They complain, I, I got to take my kids to school. I got to do this. I got to do that. One way or another, they're going to come up with an excuse. Now you solve that. Hey, man, you can do it from the comfort of your home. You don't even have to turn on your camera. You could be drinking coffee in your pajamas at 2 p.m. And you could get on and get the training. And they still won't make it. No matter how easy you make it, these people are always going to have an excuse. These are not even the one cooler people. These are the zero cooler people. These are the type of people, the person that I'm talking about, is the type of person that if you give them that opportunity, that person's not even going to go to the beach and sell anything. Even if they're broke, even if they need it. Now, some people, maybe because they're broken, that's in their area, will say, well, shit, I don't have a choice. I got to make some money to pay the rent. Then they'll make enough money to pay the rent, maybe, and, 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 and a little bit of extra money. And then they're cool. Like, bro, you could go another four or five hours. You can make another three, four hundred bucks. Think about it. Five hundred dollars is what they made in 1978. That's the equivalent of about $4,000 today, maybe three thousand. That's an insane amount of money to make in a day. But it's, again, as Tony Robbins says, your greatest resource is your resourcefulness. So the bottom line is, it's the standards. And most people are complacent. Tim Grover has a great quote. He says, good is the enemy of great. I believe that wholeheartedly. My son, he says, okay, good, great. What, is there anything above great? And I said, yeah, um, exceptional. I would say exceptional is above great, right? And he said, he asked me this question. He's seven years old. He asked me, this. he says, is great the enemy of exceptional? And I thought about it for a second. We were driving home from jiu-jitsu, and I said, you know what? It might be, Maximus. It might be. Here's why. If good is the enemy of great, why is good the enemy of great? Because people will never strive for great because they're doing good enough. Those guys could have had a great day, the one cooler people. They could have had a great day. They could have made four or 500 bucks instead of 100. But 100 to them was like, shit, my parents don't even make this in a week. So that was a good day. If you ask them, how'd your day go? Man, it went good. I made a hundred bucks, 1978. But great would have been four or 500 bucks. They could have done it. But that extra three or $400 for an extra three or four hours worth of work wasn't worth it. Why wasn't it worth it? Because they were already at good and good was their standard. Their standard was good. And that's how most people are. Most people have their standards in their mind. Most, some people's standard is 40 grand a year, 50 grand a year, 80 grand a year. If they get there, boom, that's it. And guess what? God bless them, man. I'm not criticizing. I'm simply making an observation. See, when you are in the team building and leadership business, like, uh, that's what I do, right? Um, I used to get frustrated with people. I don't get frustrated anymore because I understand how some people, they're, they're just going to be that way. And I'm looking for the lookers. I'm looking for those people that are looking for a better way, that are looking for more time freedom, that are looking to make what they used to make in a year, looking to make that in a month, possibly even in a week. And I've got people that have accomplished that working with me, right? But the bottom line is, at the end of the day, 
They're complacent. And remember, good is the enemy of great. So I'm going to give you a couple of tips here um, on how you could separate yourself. If you want to go from good to great, just a couple of tips based on this story. So number one is you want to decide decide, make a decision, make a decision that this is your new identity, that you're a five cooler person, despite those people around you being either one cooler people or no cooler people. You've got to decide, hey, listen, the old me is dead and gone. The new me is I'm making a commitment. From now on, I'm a five cooler person. Some people are not a five cooler person because they don't, frankly, some people don't know what it really takes to be successful. Some people don't know what it takes to be successful. I'll give you a, a, another example. I've got people that have never been a sales professional. And when I started in the solar industry, I started door knocking, right? And I remember I didn't care if I got 100 no's. I said, eventually, I'm going to be competent. Eventually, if I do this right, I'm going to have a bunch of referrals. I'm going to have a huge team. Now I've got almost 1,000 people selling solar nationwide, right? In network marketing, I've built some very, very big teams in the, in the over 100,000. So I know what it takes, but some people really don't know what it takes, And that's why they never go from good to great, because they really don't know that it takes that much effort, that much setbacks to achieve success. So number one is you want to decide. Number two is if you want to win in life, you have to understand that you're going to be the odd ball. You will be different. Your friends, your family members are are, are going to look at you different. For example, working weekends. I worked weekends many years. I don't work weekends anymore. If I do, it's very rare. And I actually, because I love what I do, right? But I could take the rest of the year off if I want to, right? And I'm going to still make a great income, right? So the situation is that if you want to win in life, you have to know ahead of time. You're going to be different. You're going to be the oddball. You're going to get criticized. Don't expect people to, don't expect people to understand your, your, your dream if they don't have your vision, Right? Don't expect people to understand you if they don't have the personal growth. Don't expect people to understand you because you're listening to a different sphere of of people. You're getting influenced by a different type of person, the people you hang out with, the new people you start to hang out with, the the content you you listen to. That is going to be a lot different than what these people say. Very often you hear people say, hey, man, you've got to be you've got to be happy with what you've got. You've got to be satisfied. Excuse me as a word. You've got to be satisfied with what you've got. And that's not true. You should be happy with what you've got. It's what we've got. It's what we got to work with. Mine is to be happy. I'm not saying not to be happy, but satisfied is a different thing because guess what? Dissatisfaction brought this camera that's recording this. Dissatisfaction brought this computer. Dissatisfaction brought the internet, the telephone, the airplane. Dissatisfaction brought those things. Now, again, you could be happy in the current situation that you're in. The real key is to be happy in the situation that you, you are in even if it's not that good, when you really have the faith and you, and you believe and you understand that you attract things into your life, that it's just a matter of time, your situation is just temporary, you can generally be happy in, what, in a situation where most people would not be happy. Okay, so anyways, step number three, you want to limit your association with people who are not where you would like to be. And I'm not only talking about money. I'm talking about relationships. I'm talking about fulfillment. I'm talking about health. I'm talking about fitness. There are some people for me that when I learned this concept, somebody told me you are the average, the combined average of the five people that you spend the majority of your time with. Guess what? You could also spend time with people that don't know you like me, like, like people, you know, Gary Vee, uh, uh, you know, a, a bunch of people. And I'm not comparing myself to Gary Vee. I'm just giving you an example. The people that you hang out with, even if it's just videos that you're watching, books that you're reading, et cetera, that also applies. So when they told me you're the combined average of the five people that you spend the majority of your time with, I said, huh, that makes sense. They told me your income will be roughly $5,000 around the average income in the group you hang out with. So if you hang out with a bunch of dudes that are making 40 grand per year, you're going to be between 35 and 45,000. 100,000 between about 95 and 105,000. And I said, really? And a millionaire told me these things. And here's the deal. I just took his word for it. And he was trying to help me. And I said, I'm going to listen to you. He says to me, you have to, some, some people that you spend hours with, you've got to limit it to maybe one hour or less. Some people that you spend minutes with, maybe so negative, that you've got to just completely disassociate yourself from them. Some people that you consider friends need to become acquaintances. And that's exactly what I did. 
When that is one of the things for me in my life and in my business that started creating a big separator. Then I started identifying. When I would work weekends, friends of mine would make fun of me, would criticize me. They would, they, they, they would throw, they would say a lot of indirect jokes about me, right? A lot of indirect criticism about me, right? Oh, JC's going to be working today. He can't go play basketball, can't go to the gym with us, can't go to, you know, watch the game with us. And, and, you know, have some beers in a wing with us because he's too cool, because he's getting rich, because he's going to be rich one day. Ha, ha, ha. Well, guess what? It worked out. But the difference is that the friends that I hang out with now, they have big goals. They cheer me on, right? And if you are in a situation where you have friends like that, guess what? There's a saying in Spanish. Uh, it says, with friends like you, who needs enemies, Right? So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the DNG podcast. Here's a price for the podcast. It's a like and a comment. You like this concept, it's a like and a comment. So like and comment it, share it, and I'll see you guys at the top or from the top. Take care.